Hi guys, welcome to Bipolar Cast episode. What is this episode for you? I think it's episode four. For you. Episode four coming here with Nam Che from South Africa. So my name's Matt. I do bipolar. I have bipolar type one, and um, talking about the ketogenic diet and metabolic treatments for that. Um, my partner Ian, also bipolar. Well, why don't you introduce yourself, Ian? Go for it. Hey, uh, <clears throat> yes, yeah, so I'm bipolar too. Um, this is our fourth interview with someone else who's bipolar. So this has been really great. We've had some amazing feedback on the first few. Um, we talked to um, someone last week who had just tried ketogenic diet for the first time and within a couple of months said he was 80% better. And normally, um, sorry, Nomche has, uh, Nomche is the right pronunciation, isn't it? It's a good attempt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Scottish, so you have to bear with me. I can't pronounce anything. I can't pronounce normal words. Anymore. So, <laughs> the, um, so, <clears throat> so um, Nomche emailed me uh saying that she had had a similar experience so we asked her if she wanted to come on today and, and talk about it so so how did this start for you Namche? how did you um did you try a ketogenic diet expecting to have like mood improvements or was it just something for your general health and then you had these mood improvements in addition to it okay so uh, okay so it all started with my my weight it started as a weight problem and i was looking for a solution and then i saw an interview it wasn't an interview but it was a youtube video by dr uh, Marx. she's a she's a psychiatrist based in the us and then she mentioned metformin in that interview so then i decided that i wanted to research more on metformin and whilst i was researching metformin I then came across the whole thing around um, uh, gluten, dairy, and sugar. So that is how my journey started. What were your um, symptoms like before, and did you see an improvement? And if so, what kind of what was that? Okay, um, I don't know whether you'll mind me going just a bit back. So it's, it's, it's going to be really, really back. And then I just want to take you through and then, um, and then I'll, so I'll talk about the improvements that I saw. So, and the reason why I'm going back is because I'm hoping somebody will relate to the story and go, you know, uh, that is exactly what happened to me. Uh, because when I, as I was relating to you, Ian, when I was reading somebody else's story, I thought I could have written that story. It sounds exactly like my story. So um, I hope this resonates with someone. So Matt, I'm just gonna go back a little bit and then I uh, will get into everything that, that happened from there on. Um, as, a, as, a young, as a young girl, I could say that, um, okay, my earliest memory is when I was three years old and I had very bad, very bad migraines. So that is why I remember parts of my childhood very well because the migraines were that bad. And so um, those took me until I was about maybe eight years old. I kept on having migraines. And then I started, I then had an egg allergy so eggs had to completely be eliminated from my diet. But soon thereafter, I think I was around 11 years old, I started having a problem with tonsils and they were really bad to an extent where I had, it was, it was, it was a regular thing for me to miss school. And, um, but, but there, then the migraine started to be less frequent. So, um, and then I had the migraines, um, the, the tonsils more, more frequently than I did the migraines. And then, um, and then at around, I could say it was around what? At around 16, I started having a, a problem with with period pains. So the tonsils went down a bit, the migraines went even further down. 
And then now I was having severe period pain. So I'd been, I, I started my periods at about, uh, I think it was 12 or so. So then, um, so it was quite a surprise for me to then suddenly have period pains. So it really seemed to come out of nowhere. Um, and then, um, but I need to mention that I had been vegetarian since I was 11 years old. And this was because of spiritual reasons. I'm Seventh-day Adventist and they're very big on vegetarianism. I don't know whether you're familiar with the church. So I was vegetarian since around that time. And then, so yes, it was a period of pains from around age 16. And then, um, and then I had, and then I had my son um, in 2010. And then in 2014, my family decided to start a bakery, but we were running it from home at that point. And I was the designated baker. And then as we started the whole baking thing, um, I had, I, I, now in hindsight, which is uh, crazy, in hindsight, I realized that it is around the time that we started baking that, uh, I started having, I could say like hallucinations, hearing voices, you know, and then, um, it, it got worse. It, it became a severe tummy ache. So every time I ate something, I had a very bad tummy ache to a point where I decided that I was going to buy these, um, like shakes to replace meal, meal, uh, meal replacement shakes. And then, um, and, and, and then, and then after the tummy ache, I, I got a sensation like water was running down my leg and I became very emotional. So I would cry, just randomly start crying and the heels started going down from there. And then um, I, I, I then eventually got, got a psychiatrist. This is now in 2015, if I'm not mistaken. And then the whole process of trying to get on, on and off uh, medication, finding the right dose, finding the right medication for you. Uh, and I was very grateful because I was able to sleep for the first time in about a year and a half um, of my illness. And, and so I was very, very grateful that I found a solution. But then in 2018, I decided, okay, I want to break from the medication. Um, and that was motivated because by the, I had severe acne and also by weight gain. So I decided I just want to break, let me just be me. And yes, that after a year, my symptoms came back. They came back in the form of a, of a migraine with aura. Um, so then I went to the psychiatrist and she said, yeah, it sounds like mania. And then, so I was back on the meds and she put me on 0 0.5 milligrams of Risperco. Um, and that solved everything. But to everybody's amazement, it was a very, very low dose. So usually people are started on about one or whatever, but I was on 0 0.5 and I, I didn't have any um, bad reactions after that, except a year later, this is now in 2020, I get on the scale and I weigh a nice 63. So 63 kilograms is not a lot for the average person, but I am 1.43 meters in height. So I'm a very tiny person. 63 is a lot for me. And I was not happy with the weight. So then I started with, um, I decided, okay, let me change my diet. Let me count calories. And I couldn't, I just couldn't. I, there was no way that it was going to work. It had gotten to the point where I would wake up at night uh, craving um, with whatever it was, whether it was rice. We also have pap, which is like a corn, um, crushed corn that is made into porridge, a stiff porridge. So I would wake up in the evening, 1, 2 a.m. and go and nibble on that because the craving is so severe. So the weight was, was just not going to give way. And then, so I kept on trying with the whole weight thing and it was just not shifting, tried working out and everything. And then I, I came across the episode by Dr. Marks where she was saying, 
um, metformin. So then I did research on metformin and then I decided that that is what I'm going to try. Um, the first doctor didn't want to give me, the second doctor didn't want to give me metformin and the th third doctor gave me metformin. And then I came back home with the metformin and I decided, let me read a bit more on the metformin. And, that, and then that reading process is what led me to the gluten, dairy and sugar issue. So this is now late in July of 2021. So that's this year. Um, just a quick detour. It's quite intimidating to share my story because I can't be like, uh, it's three years of doing this and it's working and, you know, I don't have such a testimony. It's been a few it's been a few months. I'm getting into my sixth month of doing this. So it's very early. And so maybe somebody may wonder why am I even sharing my story when I, when it's so early, you know, quite frankly. And the reason is I'm, I, I have seen a very big difference in my life and I'm hoping that maybe my sharing will make somebody get onto the same journey and see how it works for them as well. It might work for you, it might not work for you, um, but this is this is my story. So um, this is second week of June, 2021. And then now I'm reading up on the gluten and the dairy and the sugar and I'm overwhelmed. I I couldn't believe what I was I was seeing. So yes, my journey started with a weight loss, um, and then it just snowballed and it became something totally, totally different. And then I decided on the two two last days of June, I said, okay, I'm gonna eat everything that I love currently. That's chocolate, biscuits, you name it. I'm just gonna have it because I'm about to go on a very on a very stringent uh, lifestyle thing that is happening. Um, so yes, I had an idea that it could affect how I experience uh, bipolar, but it it's the whole journey started with with weight loss. Yeah. In conclusion, Matt. <laughs> that's that's really interesting. Uh, yeah. so, I mean, the metformin thing, uh, we should come back to that because there's some research happening on this. Um, so, so when you, so you came to keto through learning about metformin and the effects it's having on lowering blood sugar. Um, I love Terry. I love uh, the YouTube channel. Is it Tracy Marks you were on? It's Tracy Marks. Yeah, yeah. she's the best. Tracy's, <laughs> Tracy's always got your back, no matter what. She's got yeah. videos on everything. Uh, she's brilliant. Yeah. So, yeah. so, and she's been doing that for 10 years. She's great. Um, so, yeah. So when you started keto, what was the first time you noticed a difference that something was had changed or something was different? Yeah. Oh my goodness. <sighs> okay. So I I invited my sister to join me because I figured this is going to be very difficult for me to do it alone. I wanted somebody to hold my hand. Um, and you'll understand why I'm mentioning my sister just now. I, this is day one, day two, I go to sleep. I, it must have been around 1 a.m. or so. I'm woken up by a sensation. It was, I, I describe it as a lifting of a curtain because that is exactly how I experienced it. It was just, it, it feels like, it, it felt like the curtain had been like this and then it just went progressively like that. And that, that sensation woke me up. Um, and I sat up in my bed and I thought, oh my goodness, this diet has led me to mania. And now I was scared. My heart is beating very fast and thinking, what a mess. I worked myself into an, 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 an episode. They can get nasty, as you know. So um, I think, okay, I'm sitting in my bed and I'm thinking, what a mess, what a mess, what a mess. And then several minutes later, I, 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 I speak to myself and I'm like, no, let's try and fall back to sleep. And if you sleep, that will be a sign that it's not mania. And I fall back asleep. I wake up in the morning. This is 
July is winter in South Africa. So you're not expecting it to be all bright and everything. I wake up and everything looks brighter. I, it feels, it feels like a, it, it sounds like a lie until it has happened to you. I wake up and everything looks brighter. The colors are popping out. The blue of the sky is just there. My in my room has got elements of white, as you can see, and every, everything just looks brighter. And I think, oh my goodness, I'm manic. And I stay there for two hours, scared of getting out of bed because I think I am manic. Yeah, so this happened on the on the third day as as the as the day was progressing. And I decided, okay, I'm going to wake up from here and I'm going to watch how I act throughout the day. And then um, we'll see whether I can sleep at night. And then I progressed, uh, proceeded with my day. Um, eight o'clock, because I wanted to see what's going to happen. 8 p.m., I'm in bed. I want to see, am I going to be able to fall asleep? Lo and behold. I fall straight to sleep. I'm I'm thrown aback by by that. Yeah, just remembering it, it it's crazy. Yeah. So so <clears throat> so that's so interesting because in the um so we've been looking at what people are saying online about ketogenic diet, uh, what people have been talking about. And they often mention that the, the transition into keto, and I know that this has been spotted by their practitioners, you can feel almost like, um, like it has a, there's a mania in transition sometimes, or like a hypomania. So some people will, and, and there's some relevancy to the epilepsy literature as well, because it takes about two or three days to establish the kind of um, seizure control because your ketone levels are coming up. And some people, and a lot of people in that talk about <clears throat> doing this diet with bipolar notice in the first three days, there's a sort of transition where you can feel hypomania or elevated mood, but there's, there's something happening in the brain that's changing and you can feel it, but then it tends to settle down after three or four days. Is that kind of what you experienced? Did it, did it then settle into a sort of a better mood or how did it change for you over the first few days? Okay. Or, or did it remain the same? I, I thought maybe I adapted to the change, not necessarily that maybe I went back to my former state. And the reason why I say that is because I used to struggle with getting out of bed in the mornings, but this is definitely not the situation anymore. I, I'm, I used to think that I was an, an, an owl, but now I'm up uh, 5.45. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure whether it goes back to what it used to be or there's like an adjustment but for me the experience is that um, I adapted to the new me and I would like to add maybe just uh, continuing with how then I experienced it is that several it must have been two weeks later um, I'm, 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 I'm sleeping I, I don't know whether anybody else can also uh, testify to the fact that there's a this the transition happens when you're sleeping or whatever the case might be I don't know but I'm sleeping and then I I hear very audibly um, something is going on and again I wake up thinking oh my goodness I've just become manic and I'm panicking oh my word oh my goodness um, and it turns out that it's my cousin who is doing his night routine, he's washing his face, whatever, you know, preparing for bed. Um, but for, and this is something that he does every evening. But for the first time this evening, I heard it very loud. Um, so just to put this into context, I have tinnitus as well. So um, Okay, so then I, I wake up, it's very audible. I'm surprised, oh my goodness, my, then I realized my hearing has improved. Um, so this, it, it, when I explain it, it feels like that thing where after you've been in an airplane and there's been that change in, I don't know what they call it, and your ears feel like they're plugged, yes. And then, um, and then you do that whole yawning, so, um, like, you know, like you're yawning to just pop your ears. 
so it felt like I had been living with this um shut uh how do I put this with like a plug in my ear and now this plug is removed so um <laughs> I wake up the following day, I'm very happy about my hearing. And um, another, another thing that has happened with regards to my hearing is that now I'm able to, to listen to music without getting, getting very irritated. Um, I don't listen a lot because I don't want to drive myself crazy either, but um, now I'm able to listen to music and really appreciate it. And, um, so it's been progressive. It's been progressive. I mean, I'm ready to share even more things that I've experienced since then. But um, over the weeks, that's one of the things that has happened. That yeah, the hearing has improved. I find it so interesting hearing about weird things that can happen from this diet when your body adapts to ketones that haven't necessarily been studied, and people's experiences are different. Um, but I think that's fascinating. One other question I have though is. I remember when I started the diet in January, I live with a bunch of people in their twenties. And so as you can imagine, there are like carbs all over the house. There's bread everywhere, cookies, ice cream, soda, everything you can imagine. So it was kind of hard for me the first couple of months having to, you know, not eat any of this. Was that hard for you having to adapt and be strict with the diet and things like that? I had a crutch. And maybe that's the advantage that I have because the metformin removed the cravings that I had for the carbs and the sugar. And also when I saw the change on the third day, that was, that was my cue to hold on. In terms of temptation, not so much. Not so much. And I can probably attribute that to the fact that I did have the metformin as a crutch. And yeah. Metformin. Oh, and my sister. And my sister, because I had my sister who had to live the same thing. So I I, I had I I had crutches on both sides. <laughs> That's awesome. The um, metformin is so interesting because uh, there's a study just come out. Well, it's to be published by someone called Cynthia Kalkin. And she was the first scientist that kind of brought attention to insulin resistance, really, in bipolar. She was showing that insulin resistance is in over 50% of people with bipolar. And she, she, so she said, you know, uh, metformin is working on insulin resistance. So what would happen if we gave this to some bipolar patients? And um, they haven't released the paper, but they presented it, I think, at a conference. And I saw the notes from it. And they were saying they were getting results they've never seen with metformin that people were going into like significant remission on metformin. So we need to wait for the paper, but it sounds very interesting and promising that could be helpful. So be you were very ahead of the curve on that because uh, that's like the first study I've seen on that. Wow. Very, um, very interesting. Hopefully, hopefully it could be something because you can only imagine if metformin was helpful for bipolar, how that could change things. So we'll, we'll wait and see the paper, but very interesting. Um, so what happened from there? Did you decide to stay on the diet because you felt there was an improvement or did you feel that it was giving you some mania? What, what did you feel after that? I had more reasons to go on. Um, and then I realized, oof. I need to add this. I am very pro medication and I do believe that medication has a, a place, a role to play. Um, how do I put this? So I don't want this to be mistaken as me encouraging anybody to get off their medications or to do this diet with the expectation that they will get off their medications. Um, I'm not anti-medication. So um, as the days progressed, one day I was talking to my sister and my cousin, and then I realized I hadn't had a nightmare in a long time whilst on this diet. And this realization then made me decide, uh, I want to see how I will do without my my medication, the 0.5 milligrams of Risperdal. So um, about 
probably in September, I decided let me remove the, the RISPR call and see how I do. Very, very risky. I, I do not encourage anyone to do it, uh, but I'm a risk taker very, very much. So I did it and um, so far, so good. I'm still on the diet, very, very strictly so to a point where if it's processed, I don't consume it. So if it has been, I take my food as natural as possible. If I'm going to, if it needs cooking, I'm the one who's going to, to do the cooking. Um, yeah, so I'm still on the diet and that's the other change that I've made. And I stopped the pill in September. And since then I, I've, I've, I can say I've only seen good things happening. Um, yeah, I haven't, in terms of, I haven't had an episode. I haven't struggled with sleeping. I'm not having nightmares. Another big thing, um, su uh, feeling suicidal. Haven't had that as well on the diet. Very incredible because at least once a week, I would be, I would be feeling suicidal if, yeah, once a week I would be feeling suicidal and now you're just trying to hold on to every reason that uh, you have for living. But I haven't, I haven't had that since. That's amazing. Um, so that was a major difference, you noticed from before and after the diet was that that went away or? Yes, yes. Yeah, I think because I think because um, we always try and say in the podcast as well that this we are never saying that something like ketogenic diet is a cure for bipolar or for anything else, but it, it can make a significant difference. And it seems to be a lot in the depression side of the illness that people who had very severe depressions, the ketogenic diet helps to lift it. And so I think that it's really interesting what you're saying that you came at this from looking at medication first with metformin. And then you, um, you must have been really reading about this because a lot of people wouldn't even understand that that could be useful. So that's very cool. We, we, um, a lot of people, yeah, they wouldn't understand um, that at all. So, and then you went on the diet and you noticed a shift. And so uh, what you're describing sounds very similar to what a lot of people know in sort of case reports of bipolar. So the first case study that came out of bipolar and ketogenic diet was these two patients by someone called James Phelps. Have you seen this at all? Um, it's it's a it was one of the first studies uh, case studies on bipolar, and a and Can a lot of them. Can you tell me more? I think I might know about it. Yeah, uh, so a lot of them notice this kind of two to three day shift into ketosis where ketones come up and glucose comes down, and then after that is when the mood stabilization would begin in, in these case studies, and then after that there can be a continual kind of uh, uh, there can be a sort of continual mood improvement if people stay with their ketones high. So it's really interesting um, that you experienced that. And I, I totally relate to what you said when you transitioned. <clears throat> it did feel like a kind of curtain coming off. You're like very much of the feeling that this is something I've never experienced. Um, I remember just, um, I was sitting on a bus and I remember looking out the window and just feeling like, oh, I've never noticed uh, that you can just feel kind of calm and peaceful before, <laughs> you know, it was always, you know, my. so I, I totally relate to that feeling of the curtain lifting. Um, so, so how would you say um how would you say it's in your daily life has been doing keto made things easier or has it made some people find it actually tricky because you've got to do all this meal preparation how has it affected your day-to-day -day life uh every every uh, every friday 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 saturday um some sundays i I go out um, for lunch, dinner, whatever the case might be. And it's so, I, I feel like it's got an anti-social element to it, you know, because now you are sitting there and I don't wanna mess with anything. So I'm not having juice, <laughs> you know? um i'm ordering water and you get some side eyes like what's wrong come on it's a weekend uh no i'm not interested um and then it's time to order the main meal and then you are like uh okay i'll have the 
the Greek salad without the cheese and please don't add anything. I'll, I'll put the oil and the salt myself, just put the everything else. And every, now you are that person at the table who hold that, don't add that. And uh, um, yeah, it can be a bit isolating, but because, um, so the people around me have been very understanding. And I figured that it's because of the change that they see. So suddenly I have a sense of humor, uh, something I didn't have. And they appreciate that and they love that. So they, 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 they take it, you know, they're very understanding um, with that regard. Uh, somebody wants to surprise you with a cake or something. Um, they, uh, just this past Sunday, I went and I visited my aunt. Actually, I was dropping off my son who wanted to play there. And they were having a birthday. And I didn't want to offend anyone. So I said, oh, my goodness, I'm just here to drop my son. But I'm kind of like in a rush because, you know, I don't want to mess um, with the mood at a birthday, especially with people who don't truly really understand what's going on. It would have been better if I had, I had told them before that this is what I'm doing. So, yeah, what I'm just basically trying to explain is that it can be a bit isolating socially. People can give you side eyes. But those who know you before and fully appreciate the change that they've seen happen because of the diet are very supportive and they're able to bear with um, these now, this picky you, it's a picky you. Mm -hmm. Well, and what would you say they notice is different when they're spending time with you? Uh, okay. I, uh, okay. Um, Apart from sorry. having like five avocados on every plate and butter everywhere. Um, so, I mean, in terms of the experience of me, it's certainly that... Um, as I walk, as I, as I just walk in, um, I don't know if I could share some of my, my before pictures, but my skin is much clearer. Everybody wants to know why is that? If they haven't seen me, whoa, why do you have such good skin? And then, oh my goodness, I have to tell them because we were about to have a meal together so that they understand what it has done for me. And then, um, yeah, you're right about the avos. I was just asking yesterday, somebody was, uh, well, we made a bet, um, we were doing the rock, paper, scissors, and they said, if you win, I'm going to buy you a packet of avos. And so that's because there are just so many avos. And I mean, isn't it nice that you can just sprinkle so much olive oil on your food and not feel guilty about it? So that's the other thing. You pour oil and everybody's like, oh my goodness. And you're like, I'm, I'm officially the healthiest person on this table. So please just, <laughs> so those I, are some of the changes. I like to think it's just inspiring for them. Like, oh, this is possible to eat that much butter. <laughs> we, have, um, we, are, <laughs> we are always, yeah. um, I'm always amazed at restaurants when you're trying to like keto up your meal. Like if we go to, if we go to five guys um i'll order uh, triple bacon you know cheese everything else on it and people will kind of like just watch this thing being constructed but um it's i think people will kind of respect it in time because if they see that you're committed to it it kind of becomes something that they learn about and understand i, I know matt found the same when he was starting like especially living with 20 year old college students that must have been crazy when I went to Mexico shortly after I started the diet, I would go to the restaurants and I would order like uh, avocado, some hamburger patties. And then I would, cause I was trying to get some calories. I'd ask them to bring me a bowl of melted butter and I would just take it like a shot to get the calories and to get my ketones up. And that was great. People would look at me like, what are you doing, man? This is ridiculous. I said, well, ketogenic, man. I got to get my fat. That's awesome. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's an amazing one. I've not, I've never done that before, but maybe I need to try it. Um, just, was it just in a, what, just in a shot glass or in a, a little bowl of butter and I would just, you know, <laughs> take it down with the, with the patties and, you know, it was that's great. Awesome. Mm. That's awesome.
the um yeah we, we've been trying to find interesting food um since starting this because there's there's tons and tons of recipes you can use um but i, I always get drawn towards the kind of keto desserts and baking and stuff and it, and it never it always kicks me out of keto the almond flour things and the coconut flour stuff have you tried that i look forward to being that brave i don't want to throw myself off i mean it's so early and i'm yeah. truly enjoying the benefits you know maybe one day i'll be as brave um to start having keto desserts no, yeah yeah it, it's very risky territory like the difference between i've measured it with like almond flour you're amazed at how many almonds you're actually able to eat when they're ground up like that it's quite incredible and the carbs and that adds up um so so are you absolutely strict keto now for do you think it will be for for years to come or do you think you might try coming off it at some point or is, is this you set for life on keto it's very difficult to determine what you'll do in the future um and this is because i set a period of two years to see how i react um, whether I'll be able to sustain the wellness that I'm experiencing and um, what will happen in terms of the episodes. But in terms of commitment to seeing it through, I'm definitely in. And this is how I, I, I can live like this. I recently saw a dietitian to help me balance um, in terms of nutrition and everything like that. Um, so it's definitely something that I can I can do to an extent where um, I'm even willing to to not be I'm very I'm very I, I'm very vegan at this moment so I'm willing to to incorporate meat if this is the wellness that I will be experiencing. So maybe after two years, I'll get in touch with you and still have the same story to tell. We'll have to um, recommend, there's some good keto meters and things like this. Do you, do you measure at all? Um, you can get these uh, devices that measure your keto and glucose levels. Have you ever tried those? No, I haven't. Um, but to kind of like push myself right into it what i have done is i have some mct oil so i'm i'm hoping that they are making sure that i am in ketosis but that that's something that i can i can incorporate into my life and and maybe measure them for a month or two to see whether it's actually i'm actually where, where I am in terms of ketosis, yeah. I started out um, measuring my ketone levels and I was frequently above two millimoles and very high. And then as I progressed month after month after month after month and stabilized, now I find that even at like 0 0.7, 0 0.8 in a moderate ketosis, I actually am symptom free and I can kind of coast there. So Ian, I... I don't actually worry too much about all the almond flour, some of the desserts, as long as in general, I avoid bulky carbohydrates like potatoes, rice, sugar, whatever, all that stuff. Um, I, uh, I find that it's okay, but, um, what are, uh, cause you're doing a vegan, vegan keto. So I assume it's a lot of avocados, a lot of butter, a lot of oils. What are some of your other favorite things to eat? Cause I know most people who do it like to eat meat. Okay, so um, I have a lot of nuts. I do have a lot of arrows. Uh, so it's the olive oil. I make sure that I always have a spoon of MCT every day. Um, that's in the morning. Later on, another spoon of the MCT as well. My favorite food at the moment, now that I've done this, <sighs> um, it has to be coconut. Um, the coconut cream, I I like that. Yeah. And have you have your symptoms gone like full remission? Like you haven't seen any resurgence of any mania or moderate depression since you started the diet or anything like that. They are completely gone. 
um, wow. yeah, so, I mean, in the process, I've even gained a sense of humor. So that's, that's how, that's how gone they are. And much to my mom's surprise, even the things that used to, that used to stress me, I don't know whether anybody else can re relate. So maybe um, what's stressing you is work. And every time you think about a certain problem at work, it, it has the potential to drive you straight into um, depression. So even when I am thinking about the things that would uh, trigger being suicidal and things like that, uh, I just, I, I just don't go into, into an episode. That's amazing. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's such an odd thing because you wouldn't think a diet could do something like that. You know, it doesn't seem obvious that that'd be something you would try. It's certainly not something I ever considered growing up. Um, and it's remarkable because it might, what we hope is that it will shine some light on what causes these conditions, you know, like maybe it will show some different mechanism or some different way that these work that we hadn't expected. And so, so again, we never say that like ketogenic diet is just the, the absolute cure for any condition, but it, it really helps people a lot. And there's something about it that's really interesting that we need to research. So something that um, me and Matt and are working on with uh, the research side of it is speaking to people like yourself that have had this experience and trying to share these stories uh, so that we can raise attention to it and just start a conversation and say, what's happening? Why are people having this experience? And, and what does it say about the illness that someone could go from being suicidal to not suicidal just because of going on a ketogenic diet? You know, it's so fascinating. Um, so, so we're doing scientific studies over the coming year to try and so we're having 25 people with uh, bipolar go on a ketogenic diet and they're going to be supervised by dietitians and we're going to go through mrs brain scans and take blood tests <clears throat> and we're going to measure before and after what happens when you go on keto and so it'll be really interesting to find out what is this doing to the brain because clearly in epilepsy it can stop people having seizures so there's something fundamental it's changing the brain we just don't know what it is yet so it's funny because on the outside, it doesn't seem like a scientific thing, just eating, you know, a high fat, low carb diet, but there, it does something very uh, fundamental in the energy uh, metabolism of the brain that we can research. So, so we're excited about finding more about it. And hopefully on this podcast, we can update as to what we learn as we go. Um, but thank you so much for sharing your story and coming on to talk about it. And uh, it's fantastic that you've felt so much better with this. And yeah, we, if we can support or help, with anything you should give us a shout um uh, we, we, i should send you a ketone meter for a start uh, those are really helpful uh, you can measure it and uh, <clears throat> you measure your uh, if you want to look even more weird when you're at a restaurant you can take out your ketone meter and start taking measurements that's what i do um i find <laughs> if i you know if i'm not uh, piling butter on everything else so um i used to have two meters because you have to have a separate glucose and ketones one now i've got one so my wife was always saying ian do we really have to measure this every meal time I was like, yeah of course um so and then she started keto herself and she um she enjoyed it and she she likes it as well so um yeah thank you so much and um we'll keep you updated with what we learn about the research on this and hopefully we'll meet many more people that are having this same experience um matt did you have any questions i i promised normally it would be an hour but are you okay for time normally i'm okay i'm okay uh okay let me just um listen to matt but what i wanted to say just quickly sorry matt is that mm -hmm. it's a very exciting thing i mean i was so excited to hear about the study that you guys are doing and i was even willing to participate unfortunately i'm so far away but i can't wait for the results well, I think there'll be many, and there's many different studies that, um, and this is, maybe Matt could say more about this, but there's, there's um, studies happening in different countries um, that you're involved in, and um, so maybe there will be one that will be accessible. Uh, at the moment, I think they're in Scotland, um, Australia, America, and, um, and there's, there's a trial happening at Stanford, uh, but hopefully there will be more around the world as this goes on, and you could... Uh, participate in one and, and learn more about this. Um, yeah, there's a trial happening over here, Stanford in California. And it's so fun uh, because this is such a fledgling community of 
people who are treating this disorder with the metabolic, metabolic um, intervention. And for me, it just feels like such an obvious thing. And for whatever reason, the doctors have neglected and they won't make the connection and the association. This, this can actually help. And I'm hopeful that in the next couple of decades, as there's going to be a revolution, people are going to start to see that this can seriously help. And so it's so fun to get to do this podcast and we get to talk to people who've had this and the testimonials are so like amazing and the success people have had that hopefully it'll just get the ball rolling and people start to see that this can actually be a serious treatment and that the doctors won't be averse because a lot of the time like you you talk with just a, an average psychiatrist about this kind of intervention and they'll say this is like ridiculous you know we need to prescribe medication that's the way we're taught to treat mood disorders is prescribe a medication to stabilize mood. And so for whatever reason, society, there's no impetus um, to, to view diet as something that can seriously affect your mood, which obviously we're starting to realize it can. So um, yeah, studies are happening all over Stanford. You know, we got this big study and trying people out and hopefully in the next few years, some serious intensive research will come out that can show that it can be a serious um, serious treatment. So yeah, it's super exciting. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't imagine um, being part of it. I, I constantly go into the YouTube channel to check whether there's a new video so that I can hear somebody else's story. Um, interestingly, when I started with the diet and I started seeing the changes in my life, I said to my mom, I'm not going to share them with anybody because I was so scared that people were going to think I am lying. And I don't know, I think when I was writing to you, Ian, um, when you first suggested the interview, I was very reluctant, you know, because I felt like people were going to judge me and they were going to think that mm, I've got other motives or I'm like, I just, I just thought people are going to say that I'm lying. And I, I, I didn't want anything to poke holes into my joy at that level. So I was not willing to share my story. But when I saw the YouTube video uh, where you are explaining, Ian, about the, sh the, the two engines that the brain can use and everything like that, oh, that is so interesting. I had to reach out. I had to comment on that video. It was so exciting. I was I was very happy to see that. I finally there was there was somebody who was putting into words something that I was experiencing. Um, just to just to maybe it would. I mean, if for nothing else, if you're overweight like I was because of the medication, get on the diet because of the weight loss benefits that you will experience. So I went from 63, and as we speak, I weigh 46 kilograms. It's not too little, like I said, because of my, of my tiny frame. And also what I want to mention is with regards to the period pains, those are completely gone. So um, to the ladies who might watch this, if you have a problem with period pains, try it. You know, if if you're watching because of the bipolar and you have period pains, try it. You you'll just you just might have um, score you know two goals in one in in one shot. Um, if you have weight problems because of the medication, you might just score because of that. So I have I've gone from obese to uh, what is that BMI? It says normal weight. So now I've gone into normal weight space. Yeah. It's interesting because it, um, like you say, it has an effect on the whole body ketosis. It's not just um, one part of it. And it is really interesting because we just increased the amount of carbs we eat so much in the past, you know, 50 years or so. And we're eating more carbs than we ever have in history. And that effect, and it's kind of well understood that this causes diabetes and it affects all different kinds of parts of the body, but it's really overlooked that it causes any effect on any significant effect on the brain. And there's a number of reasons for that, but it's now becoming very clear that it, it does have a serious effect on the brain. 
And so people experience all kinds of benefits, you know, weight loss. I lost about 40 pounds doing it. Um, people experience, you know, all kinds of things kind of resolving because this carbohydrate load is such a stress in the body and the high glucose, it just puts a stress in the whole system. And when you take that away, it's amazing the diversity of things people can notice getting better. And so I, I completely relate to what you're saying about people being skeptical about it because they're like, oh, is this a miracle diet that just fixes everything? <clears throat> but it's not. If you look at what it actually is, it's just removing the systemic stress on the whole body, which you would imagine would make a lot of things easier, you know? Um, so it's uh, so it's exciting to see that it's had so many different impacts um, on your life like that as well. And I'm sure many people can relate. Um, I want to be respectful of your time. Are you okay? We were at five o'clock. Um. <laughs> I almost got a shock. I'm like five o'clock away. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm okay with time. My my evening is clear. Um, yeah. So if you if you have another question or two, I I can still answer that. But I just also wanted to highlight something um, that we completely ignore. So uh, sometimes I feel that we ignore. At least I did. I did. Um, when we're after eliminating the three and then um and then i noticed that my son has a reaction to the same things as well so um there'll be like some minor bloating when he has bread or something with weeds he has an adverse reaction to um, dairy products and everything like that and then i i read a study that said that the kids tend to inherit the mom's metabolism or the system, yeah, the structure thereof. And so um, if you um, also just calling out to the moms, really, if you're realizing that maybe you have an adverse effect, effect to something or you realize that your child has an adverse reaction to something and you have a mental illness, because sometimes you completely ignore what what something is doing to you like you just grin and bear it like I used to have a problem of bloating when I had bread but I would still continue eat the, eating the bread so um, if you realize it recognize it in your child possibly you are also um, having a reaction maybe at a lower grade but it's it's still possible so just um, just a call to the moms to possibly mm. um, look at that if you have a problem with uh nightmares like i mentioned completely gone um i haven't had a nightmare since i i started on the diet that's amazing it's um yeah and it's so it's when you start looking at the how bipolar travels in the mom's line as well you know you know it travels in the maternal line so Moms who have bipolar tend to have, uh, you know, well, can, um, yeah, increased risk. It's still a small risk, but there is an increased risk through this kind of maternal transmission. And my family, that's the case. Uh, there's sort of mental health um, stuff going on in my mother's side. In fact, I lost my uncle to uh, suicide because of this. But it, but it'd be interesting to know whether some of these things you can inherit from your mom's side of the family are metabolic, like you say, or to do with um maybe you can inherit some of these things as well but um it's very interesting but uh but i mean on the flip side of that as well there's really positive things about um this if you look at a study of uh, nobel laureates you can see uh, that the people are, with high creativity often have bipolar in their family so there's a kind of you know there's good and bad to it but uh, the inheritance but uh yeah thanks for sharing it to the moms as well I, my <clears throat> my wife became a mum during the lockdown for the first time, so I feel the, the solidarity. Um, <laughs> Congratulations! Thank you. Not to be advised having a kid during a national lockdown, how that, but it worked out very well, so we're happy. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, I, I, it was something we spoke in about our last episode because the guy we're interviewing was someone that went on the Stanford trial, and he was saying uh, that he never wanted to have kids because of bipolar. And he was saying now he feels completely fine about it. He feels like, oh, there's something we know more about this and there's something you can do about it that, that really helps. Um, so he, he's like, I'm definitely going to have kids now and I'm definitely going to, and, and I'm not worried about my daughter at all because I really feel like there is things you can do and we're also going to learn so much more about this in the next 10 years. And, and if she did 
have it, even though it's a very small chance, uh, I'm still um, I'm still not worried about her future in the way that I would have been before. So we, we held off having kids for quite a while because of that. And um, now we're having loads. So it's, um, or at least uh, that's, what she, <laughs> that's what she says. So we're very grateful for that because it just means, um, you know, the family side of it, it affects the whole family. So Some of these testimonials we've heard are so miraculous. Like, you know, Ian and I, we've talked to people who've done this, but it almost seems like too good to be true. And obviously I've talked with, you know, other do doctors who treat this, the, the metabolic intervention and not going to work necessarily for everyone. And it's going to affect different people differently, depending on the nature of the illness and, and different things like that. But really, I think the general consensus seems to be like, if you have bipolar or, or some sort of mood, mood illness and struggling, this can be something done, hopefully under the supervision of a doctor and a dietitian and a prescriber who know what the meds are and not, and obviously not going off the meds immediately or things like that. Something that like is worth trying. Um, and, um, I guess my final question would be, um, would be what kinds of, um, what kinds of things in your life, like things you want to accomplish or your goals in your life or your relationships in have or your lifestyle have changed as a result of doing the diet now uh okay i just hmm. you know how mental illness can steal some of the best years of your life your 20s um I'm now like in my 30s and I look back at my 30s at my 20s and my life looks like it was on a standstill it's one of the things that used to cause me to cry and bemoan the fact that I have bipolar so I was busy with my exams now Matt and I for 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 about three, four years, every time I attempted to do my exams, I would have an episode. This time I did my exams off the medication and I finished all my exams. I had 12 exams and I didn't have an episode. So um, it's not necessarily catching up, but it's not necessarily catching up to my peers, but I am looking forward to getting my life in order. Um, I think you've heard me mention my mom and my cousin and everything like that. So, and it's, um, so I, I hope to gain independence and be able to do all the things that I want, for an example, like getting my own place. Um, because one of my worries was that I couldn't move out uh, because I have a son and what if I become suicidal and then, um, and then now, you know, there's a child and can become a very messy situation. But now I have enough confidence that I just finished my exams. Um, just possibly I can be able to live an independent life, um, the life that I envisioned for myself. I just want to encourage you as well. You've you've not missed out on anything. Um, there's uh, you you your life will be so you've got such an amazing story to share that you've been through all this in your twenties, and that itself is a remarkable thing to have gone through such a severe illness and then to get better from it and to go back to school and to, you know, but that story is powerful for people. And so please don't feel like you've missed out on anything because I know a lot of people do feel like that with bipolar. It robbed them of some years. But I think it's a really powerful story you have to share. And even you speaking to us on here will reach lots of people that will be affected by this and hopefully makes uh, different changes in their own life. So, so you know, I, I just think you've got amazing years to come and um, I really hope it's going to be um, fantastic. I, I, think, I think you'll be surprised as well when you've been through, it's like bipolar is like wearing like a 200 pound backpack and you're in this marathon of life. So you're trying to run at the same pace as everyone and you've got this invisible weight that's kind of holding you back. But once you throw it off, it, it can be amazing how much, you know, you, endurance you've developed and how many coping skills and how many things you've learned through that that then benefit you when you're well. So, so I really hope you find that. And, and uh, it, um, yeah, I hope things go very well in the future for you. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. I appreciate the question as well, Matt. Um, it's very encouraging. <laughs> I'm about to plan my 2022, so 
um, yeah, I look forward to that. I actually look forward to that a lot. Um, and also, I just want to, um, I mean, there are skeptics out there who might say, oh, come on, it, it, it could be, what, what is that effect called? Um, I forgot what that effect called. Placebo. It's called, yes, the placebo effect. So it might be the placebo effect. And I'm, and I'm saying if it's the placebo effect, like, if placebo does this, then I'm really happy about it. But it certainly isn't. And um, it's because the weight is physical. Everybody sees the weight change. The acne is right on my face. Everybody sees that. Um, there's a, there's a, there's, you can interview members of my family and people around um, in terms of my social structure and they will tell you that they have seen a change in terms of how I am around them as well so um yeah yeah so I just want to um say that it 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 certainly doesn't it certainly doesn't feel like a placebo because some of the changes that I experienced I was not expecting for an example with the nightmares um i didn't expect that um to change at all but it did um and so that is testimony to the fact that this does actually work thank you so much for sharing with us and um we will um yeah we'll keep updating with more interviews with people and more science about how this might be working and uh, hopefully we'll learn more as we go and find out but thank you so much for coming on to talk to us and um, and I hope the exams continue to go well and uh, continue to feel really good on keto. Thank you Namche. Thank you Matt and Ian keep well please do keep me posted. We'll do we'll keep in touch thank you and uh, oh I'll send you a keto meter uh, so yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great to speak to you. Oh.